Chris, do you even like fruitcake? This is my thing. Like when we talk about fruitcake, what are we talking about? Do you want me to tell you about it or you want to- oh, Wait, just... holy crap. Oh God, you guys, I'm not recording. <laughs> I paused it. This sucks. <laughs> Son of Ratna, and today I'm going to show you how to make an almond gingerbread fruitcake. Fruitcakes, unfortunately, are much maligned. I think there are a lot of bad ones out there, but there are also a lot of good ones. It's just a basic gingerbread cake, which I folded in some rum soaked fruit and then added an extra crumble that sort of falls in and leaves a delicious ring in the center. And I sent Chris Morocco a fruitcake, and he's going to taste it later. I can't wait. <laughs> Actually, I'm a little nervous, but we'll see. I just have a feeling he doesn't like almond extract. I don't know that for a fact, but I just have a feeling. We'll see. I love it. So the first thing we have to do is butter and flour a tube pan. This is a really sticky cake, so you wanna make sure you butter your pan really, really well. You could also do this in a bundt pan if you have one handy but you have to be sure to really, really grease the hell out of it. Always make sure you get that center. I'm gonna flour it. Even more insurance. Get the center, and then I'm gonna dump it out. And I also, just for extra insurance, have this little ring of parchment paper that I'm gonna put in the bottom. So now we can make this almond crumble, and it, the main ingredient to that is almond paste. So this is store-bought almond paste. You can make it yourself if you just combine equal parts almond flour and confectioner's sugar and then add a little bit of egg white until you get this sort of paste. But I just buy it from the store. It's fine, store-bought. And to that I'm adding softened butter, all-purpose flour, and some brown sugar. And basically I'm just making a crumble like you would put on top of a crisp or something like that. Super easy. <laughs> you can sort of hear it. When the sound changes, you know it's sort of ready. That's all. Look, it's nice and combined. I'm just gonna whiz in some more almonds. So this is half a cup of sliced almonds. So now the almonds are mixed in and we can just set this aside. Kind of just looks like wet sand. Delicious wet sand. So in my little pot I have a half a cup of dried cherries that I've chopped really finely, and then a quarter cup of really good rum. And that's gonna go in with my cherries. I'm not soaking the dried pears because they're really moist already, and the flavor is really delicate. So I wanted to just soak the cherries to plump them up and give them a little more flavor. Almost every culture, it feels like, has their version of a fruit cake. And I think if you just fill your fruit cake with things that you like to eat, so forget about those green cherries. Use nice, beautiful sour cherries and really good rum. You can make a delicious fruit cake that people will enjoy eating. You can see the rum is almost gone. It's like all soaked into the cherries. Woo! <laughs> and now it's flambe. <laughs> Oops. I don't think I've done that since culinary school. I'm glad you were here to witness that. Now we can add our pear. If you don't find dried pear, or you don't like dried pear, you could use apricots, would be really good with the cherries and the almonds. Okay, fruit's done. Now we can make the batter. So now we have to just mix our dry ingredients. So that's one and a half cups of flour. I have some ground cinnamon, ground ginger, and ground cloves, plus some baking soda, some kosher salt. We'll whisk that together. And now we can make our batter for our gingerbread. Go. Fruit cake. I keep forgetting what we're making. Now we just make our cake, standard creaming method. So I have a stick of butter, some granulated sugar, and some brown sugar. We'll whisk that up until it's creamy. So now I'm going to add some fresh chopped ginger and some crystallized ginger. Two room temperature eggs, one at a time. I'm gonna add some molasses, golden syrup, a delicious cane syrup. It's usually imported, I think, from England. It smells really good already. So I made a fruit cake for Chris and I sent it to him two days ago. Hey Chris, here's your fruit cake. I'm packing it up and I'm showing you what it looks like now because I have no idea what it's gonna look like when it gets to you. <laughs> look at that little face. Can you say, Chris, enjoy your fruit cake? Chris, enjoy. Smoke cake. <laughs>
So now I just added half of my dry ingredients. Now I have my room temperature milk all in. Fruitcake ages, supposedly. This fruitcake, I don't have instructions on how to age it, but you could brush it with rum, wrap it in cheesecloth, and then just sort of brush it with rum every other day for a while and see what happens. I think they can last a really long time. It's on a museum once, a wedding cake from 100 years ago, so I bet there's probably old fruit cakes that have been like preserved somewhere. Wouldn't that be fun to see? And the batter is ready. You, you remember the Seinfeld episode where Elaine discovered the really old wedding cake in the museum? That, is that, is she... that, did I just make that up? Did I think that happened to me, but really it happened to Elaine on Seinfeld? It's possible. That is possible. <laughs> Okay, now I'm just putting my batter in the pan. And you can see the batter's really loose. I'm adding the fruit mixture in now. On top of the batter, I'm gonna swirl it in like so, just because I forgot to add it into the mixer when I was beating the batter. It really doesn't matter where you add it as long as it gets in there sometime. And now this goes in the oven for 12 minutes. So we're gonna pull our cake out of the oven, which is, Generally a cake no-no, but we're doing it. And it's, you can see it's very, very lightly set and we're gonna sprinkle this delicious crumble all over the cake and it's totally gonna sink in, so don't worry. It's supposed to sink in. So now this goes back in the oven for another 40 minutes, 40, 45 minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna grab it out of the oven. So you can see all of that delicious almond crumble sort of fell in. Those bits that are still exposed are gonna be nice and crunchy and chewy. You could stick a toothpick in to see if it comes out clean. Um, if you hit the crumb mixture in the middle, it might come out a little wet, so you kinda of have to check a few places, but I actually just like to press it with my finger gently, and you can see it bounces right back. So this cake has been resting for a little while. It's not, it's not too hot anymore. I'm gonna flip it out onto a rack. Say a little prayer. <laughs> uh oh. Come on, baby. That was scary for a second. And now, while it's still a little bit warm, I'm going to brush it with a little more rum. Yum. It sort of soaks up a little better when it's still a little bit warm. And now I'll let this cool completely and I can glaze it. Okay, so this is just a super, super simple confectioner sugar and milk glaze. If you don't have milk, you can use heavy cream. You could even use a little bit of citrus juice or something like that. I happen to have a little milk that I'm just whisking in, like so. Now I'm adding a little bit of almond extract. It's very strong. And now here's my cake. It weighs a ton. <laughs> and I'm gonna glaze it. Just like that. This is the fun part. And she's done. <laughs> Looks cute, right? Okay, so she is ready. If I was gonna ship this, I might just wait and let that glaze set a little bit. I like this cake a lot because it looks kind of humble on the outside, but when you get inside, there's like extra secret treasures in there. Do I get to eat it now? Do I have to wait for Chris? I have to wait for Chris. I can see hey. you. Hi, friend. <laughs> How's it going? Good, how are you? This is, um, I mean, every part of the day is critical, but I'd say like <laughs> this part of the day is especially fraught. Finn, can you please put your coat on and get out? That is dirty, <laughs> excuse me, that came in today. That's dirty, get your head off of it. This is my thing, like when we talk about fruitcake, what are we talking about? So I think there are basically a million different kinds. This one is my version of a fruitcake, so it's not at all traditional. Do you like almond extract? There's a line after which it, it like becomes just gross and horrible, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. up to a certain point, I think it's amazing. You do? I love oh, it. I'm relieved, okay. Up to a certain point, and then past that point, it's just like, it's like when something's too sweet. You're with it, you're with it, and then there's a moment that comes that's just like, it's too much sugar. It's, it's like drinking, you know, straight lemon juice, you know, like it's just, it's, it's unbalanced and for me, you know, just not that good. Now I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but, Should I go get the box? Yeah, get the box. Yeah, I use a full roll of bubble wrap. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, wow. 
Not a bubble wrap. It's like a Russian nesting doll. Sorry. Oh, heavens. Man, you wrapped this thing for England. All right. <gasps> it arrived in one piece. Hey, look oh, at that. It's like look, it looks just fine. like mine. Oh, wait, should I slice it at the same time? Should we just taste it yeah, together? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. I'm getting in there. I feel pretty good about that. Oh, did you do, did you do uh, like a tube of almond paste or something? I in did. The I did a almond crumble that sort of sinks down into the cake during during the ah. baking process <laughs> uh oh <laughs> silence is scary <laughs> is that dried pear yeah wow I, I, I do a show where I identify things. And <laughs> check it out sometimes. <laughs> You've like barely made a fruit cake. I know. It kind of cheated. It, you, <laughs> like this one like squeaks I know. like into the fruit cake category. <laughs> but like what leaps out are like the almonds, like even just like the texture of the, the sliced almonds. Mm -hmm. More interesting dried fruit than just like three kinds, three colors of like raisins and the Cherries. I can't even tell you what the flavor of fruitcake is because all I can ever remember is tasting dried fruit. Right. You know, so the fact that you've made a cake that like doesn't taste like dried fruit and the fact that my kids have stayed gone, <laughs> I'm declaring this an unequivocal <laughs> win. This is amazing. Yay. Internet's holding out. Kids are gone. The only thing I would fault you for. Tell me. Oh no. No, just the balance is like, it skews a little sweet to it's me. It's sweet. You need a cup of black tea. But it, this is wonderful because like, it takes everything you don't like about fruitcake and sort of just takes that away. Thank you. I basically wanted to just make a cake that had all the things about holiday baking that I like. But I wonder yeah. maybe it needs more rum. Or you know what I think it might need is a little like orange zest or something. Yeah, totally. It's something that, that was to cut the sweetness. I just love that circle of, of almond paste that's in there. It's so special. It's so luxe. Thanks, Chris. This is such a pleasure. You can send me anything, anytime. It's nice to be able to hang out with you and like Ditto. talk food. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Chris. I hope this fruit cake changes your mind about fruit cake. I'm having mine right now with a cup of black tea and it's perfect. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Samantha Sanavaratna, and today I'm going to show you how to make my favorite... I don't know what I'm making. Oh, fruitcake. <laughs> okay. <laughs>